that. How are you, Jan? I'm okay, thank you. Um, so you <laughs> okay, well, we're at 40 people. Should do you want to get started, ladies? Yes. Doms, I should say. Um, I'm going to ask, I'm going to mute everybody if that's okay. Um, <laughs> um, okay, let me unmute. You need to unmute yourselves. Marissa, okay. Um, and I'm going to let everybody know that, that we're on record, so you are being recorded. So for legal reasons, everyone should know. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Dom Marissa to give the introduction. <laughs> Okay, Marissa, take it away. Can't hear her. Best in the Madonna Italian style in New York. <laughs> your beautiful faces. I'm thanking you for being here today. We're excited to share this special with you. Um, as you know, I was born and raised in New York City, but I'm Italian-American, so this day is very special for me and my Italian friends or people that just love Italy. Um, so I live and divide my time between Rome, Italy. Um, I grew up in the restaurant business with my father, Tony May, who owned the Rainbow Room, San Domenico, SC26, and many, Paulio, many famous restaurants. So my whole life has been food. And Women's Day has always been about food and celebration. So, <laughs> so um, you know, what is Festa delle Donne? Well, Festa delle Donne in Italy, of course, is celebrating women's friendships. So that's why we're here today. It's usually a crazy girls' night out. Um, lots of eating and drinking, restaurants filled with women um, that are celebrating together. And sometimes it ends up in a nightclub and it's girls' night out dancing also. Um, it's a day when women express their appreciation to each other in Italy. So you would express to your girlfriends, your, your mom, your grandmas, your aunts, your female cousins, how important they are in your lives. Um, for men, it sort of works like Valentine's Day because the Italian men are supposed to give women beautiful mimosa flowers. Yeah. Also, women give mimosa flowers to each other also. Yeah. Um, and lavish gifts, and their gift to the women is that they can have their night out <laughs> while they stay home with the kids. Um, so it is a very special day. On a more serious note, Festa delle Donne is really recognizing women's achievements. Yeah. So it's a day that women should really look back and remember how far we've come and where we're going. And so here, I have picked a few events that we believe inspired Festa delle Donne in Italy. So, <laughs> going back to time, um, this was the Fifth Avenue Parade in 1909 that was hosted by the Women's American Socialist Party. Um, and they were demanding increases in wages, improved working conditions, and the right to vote. Another event that actually inspired mm -hmm. yeah. was the terrible, tragic mm -hmm. Triangle Shirt Waste Factory, Cotton Factory tragedy in 1911, which actually happened near Madison Square Park. And very terribly, 122 women were killed in that, many of which were of Italian American descent and Jewish American descent. Another event that possibly inspired it was the Russian February Revolution, in which women took to the streets and demanded the end of World War One. So, but even now. And even now. So after World War II, Festa della Donna became an official holiday on March 8th, 1946. And it also became a symbolic day um, for women's rights and women to demonstrate or protest, you know, what important issues were of the day. So here we have some great old photos of women on their bicicletta. <laughs> um, 
they were demanding the, 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 their land to be and the, um, to work on yes. that land. So the man yeah. work, another, probably the next photo is probably women in the 60s or 70s, um, part of probably the teachers union mm -hmm. demanding um, better pay for teachers. And then this is a more modern day photo of women probably in 2019 yeah. with a sign that says liberty, free, freedom. <laughs> so all are wondering, so what is the mimosa flower? The mimosa flower is a very happy, bright, beautiful flower. It's actually not a flower, it's actually a tree. So it's actually a bush. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it also is, has a very lovely scent. I guess Francine and Odette don't agree with me, but <laughs> it's a very lovely scent, little hints of honey and also um, green and- It's okay, yes. we love it anyway. It's um, very and bright, yes. <laughs> The most important thing is that is the symbolic flower of the day, and it means female solidarity and joy. So, yeah, this event. So, yeah, so, this flower it definitely inspired a very special cake that looks like the mimosa. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, actually, it's called mimosa cake because uh, because. Uh, the little pieces and bits of sponge cake that are covering the cake are yellow and they look like, a, like the little buds, the flowers of the mimosa. And it was uh, first uh, created uh, near Rome in the 50s. And then uh, uh, like 10 years after, the pastry chef who uh, created the, this wonderful cake brought it to a competition in Liguria and he won the first prize. So that's, uh, it's since then that we uh, celebrate uh, uh, Woman Day with the mimosa cake and mimosa flowers. So, <laughs> you know, even though know Chef Odette is not a pastry chef, Chef Odette is <laughs> a very special female chef that I brought in today to teach us how to make the mimosa cake. For all of, the, for all of you who have been to San Domenico or SB26, my father and my restaurants, you probably remember Chef Odette there, who was our <laughs> executive chef at San Domenico and SB26 for 18 years. So Odette is really Italian. She was born in Brescia, and at age 13, she decided she wanted to cook. And uh, she cooked a lot with her family at that time. And then she went on to culinary school in Northern Italy. Um, and she worked for a very famous chef, Gisani, as well. Yeah. And then she was brought to America by a restaurateur named Mauro Vincenti, who was a very wonderful, wonderful restaurateur, a good friend of my father. And she became the executive chef of the Rex Hill Ristorante in downtown LA, which was probably the most beautiful, most fine dining time restaurant yeah. in LA at the time. And then my father, Tony May, and I decided we were going to steal her <laughs> from Los Angeles and bring her to New York. So in 1996, so that became our executive chef. Uh, San Domenico was the first Italian restaurant ever to get three stars from the New York Times, actually the first fine dining Italian restaurant. And that's because I believe my father, Tony May, was a lucky man to have two women in the restaurant. <laughs> a female restaurateur. So. Yes. And when I first met Odette, she was sitting at San Domenico in the dining room. My father said, go meet our new chef. You're going to love her. And she was actually wearing a yellow crochet dress. So I think we're meant to be very close. She's kind of like my big sister. So take it away on an emotion case. I love you, so. so, yes, uh, we... Even though I'm not a pastry chef, so you will have to deal with me. But I don't know how many of you are pastry chefs. So, okay, we start uh, all of us at the same level. And uh, we are going to make this cake. Uh, of course, for making a cake, we need the ingredients. You have them here. Basic ingredients, nothing fancy. It's actually a very simple cake that you can prepare uh, the, a day in advance. Uh, simple uh, ingredients because you just need eggs, flour, sugar, salt, 
uh, limoncello, vanilla extract, um, powder, sugar, nothing fancy. So first thing, you don't know. Uh, first thing, you have to turn on the oven. And <laughs> 350, so while you are preparing the cake, the, the oven will be preheating. Now, the first thing you want to do is uh, beat the, the eggs with the sugar. If you have a, a KitchenAid, you can use a KitchenAid and you want to beat them uh, for a long time because I would say like 10 minutes on a medium to um, high speed until it gets really foamy. It really, it becomes dense. And, and then you want to sift the flour so that uh, we will not have any, um, any lumps. And you want to add it to that uh, butter, gently folding it with a very slow uh, folding movement with a spatula, I would say, so that you break all the uh, lumps that could form but you don't want to do a, a, a very fast movement so that uh, the, uh, the cream will not collapse mm -hmm. because the eggs, um, they are full of air at this point and you want to keep that air inside you because we are not using any proof, any other proofing agent. Uh, so this will that, help, help yes, right? yes, yes. Right. yes, but we don't want any chemicals in it. Mm -hmm. So. That's why you want to do a very nice, slow movement. And uh, until all the lumps uh, uh, are, uh, are gone. Now, um, we are making with this butter, you have the recipe, this recipe is enough. I actually follow exactly this recipe for making these two, um, these two molds. One is nine inches, the small one, and one is a 12 inch. Before I pour the butter, I, uh, I brushed the molds with, a, with a melted butter, and then I dusted it with flour. I always use also a piece of parchment paper just to make sure that the cake will not get stuck and it will come out nicely. So at this point, probably the oven, it's, uh, it's preheated. And without, without shaking it too much, we want to put the, the, the two cake uh, in the oven, in the middle of the oven, not, not too low, not too high. And um, after about 40 minutes, you will have the, the cake should be ready, but the, the, a test that you can do, very simple, is with a wooden toothpick. You insert it, and if it comes out, uh, the cake is ready. Now, probably they cook at the same time, but always check the, the smaller cake first, because since it's smaller, it might cook in two minutes uh, less. But it, it's not that big of a deal, I think, to have a, the cake. I would. By the, by the way, ladies, um, we will be mailing, you will have access to the recipe, so they will send this out in case you don't have it now. And you can ask me a lot of questions, if you have any questions. Now, we want to, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't say that uh, for cooling the cakes, you have to remove them from the mold and put them on cooling rack or on a wooden uh, board. So this part, you can actually do the day before because it's better if the, if the sponge cake, il pan di spagna, it's, uh, it's nicely cold, not frozen, but cold. And uh, uh, while the, the sponge cake is cooling down, we can prepare the crema pasticera. So be before we get to that, John, there was yeah. a question. Do you yeah. fill the pans to the same height or is one higher than the other? No, really I fill them up at the same height, yes. And, and pan, pan di spagna, what does that mean? Pan di spagna is a, uh, it's a 
Yeah. It's in Italian, yeah. Sponge but cake. It's like yes, it's sponge, cake. sponge cake, but it's called Pan di Spagna because actually a Genovese uh, family, a Genovese chef, at the, uh, who was living in Madrid or in Spain, uh, created it. And so that's why it's called Pan di Spagna, but the, the family was Genovese, so it's uh, Genoise in Francais. Oh, so it's easy. In French is Genoa, mm -hmm. but in Italian is Pan di Spagna. Oh. Anyway, it's a sponge cake. Uh, let's, uh, yes, let's go <laughs> and do the crema pasticcera. Even this, we can prepare it the day before and cool it down nicely. First thing we have, uh, you, you see all the ingredients that I'm going to use. Heavy cream, milk, egg yolks, salt, sugar, cornstarch, vanilla. Uh, of course, if you have van vanilla beans, it, it's even better. Uh, if you want to put some uh, lemon zest, uh, uh, it's even better. <laughs> um, the best eggs, of course, are uh, the organic one, especially for this cake, because we want to get as yellow as possible. Preferably from Italy, right? Cleaning off the flour. It's the same thing as pastry cream, right? Pastry cream, okay. yes. Everybody has maybe a little bit different, uh, uh, maybe they use only, only milk, maybe at the end somebody will put a little bit of butter but it's pastry cream. Gotcha. So if you feel comfortable with the pastry cream that you are making, go ahead and use your pastry cream. Now we have to beat the, uh, not actually not beat, you have to mix the egg yolk, only the yolk this time with sugar. And uh, I always put a little bit of uh, salt in any dessert to enhance the flavor. So just a little pinch of salt, even when it doesn't say in the recipe. Just add it and you, you will taste that it, it needs, actually it needs less sugar. So uh, when the eggs and uh, when the egg yolk and the sugar are nicely combined, you can add sifting the cornstarch. We use now cornstarch because it makes a, a little bit smoother and silkier. And you sift the cornstarch yes. first, yeah. Yes, I do silk, uh, I do sift it, yes. Then I will add this butter uh, to my warm uh, milk and cream. Keep it on a low temperature, on a low flame um, fire. And you see that it's direct contact, it's not double boiling, it's mm -hmm. just uh, until it boils and it needs to boil like five minutes um, to, to reach the right consistency. And also because you have to cook it a little bit. And would you constantly stir it to make sure yes. that it doesn't burn on? Definitely. Yeah. This really is important. In this case, I use the, uh, the whisk because it needs to be moved and uh, we don't want the um, the cream to get stuck to the bottom. We want to melt all the possible lumps that can be there. Mm -hmm. So this is very important. And it's very important to see how, uh, how thick is this cream. It's, uh, it's thicker than usual. So that's important. Also, that's a good slide this because uh, now we, we are cooling down the uh, crema pasticcera in order not to create that film on top of crema pasticcera, we actually put already a film. So cover it with plastic wrap and make sure that the plastic wrap is attached to the cream. So when you remove the, the plastic film, it will, uh, you will have the crema pasticcera without any film. Right. Yes. Yes. Press, kind of. yes. Yeah, press, because yeah. it makes that crust that even when you mix it, it always has yeah, yes, like chocolate pudding. Like yes. what happens with chocolate yes, pudding? Something <laughs> like that. So that's why I always cover it mm -hmm. with, uh, plastic. Not with plastic. Now, 
In this season, it's okay to leave it out, but uh, you can also put it in a nice pot mm -hmm. so that it cools down faster. Um, the eggs are cooked, so it's not a big problem. Here we can see that we, are, we have our cream and we whip the 400 grams of uh, heavy cream uh, with no sugar, of which 400 grams or, uh, of heavy cream, I will use the half to put in my egg butter, egg cream. The other half, uh, we have to store for, for a minute in the refrigerator. Now here, Again, with the low, slow movement uh, from the bottom to the top with the spatula, we incorporate the heavy cream to the egg cream and, uh, and make a nice folding movement. Um, it will take maybe a little longer because the cream, the, the cream that we just made, it's uh, it's denser, as I was saying before, it's thicker, so it will take some time, but you don't want uh, the, uh, the whipped cream to collapse. Mm -hmm. So just uh, you have to be patient. So that's the do you, do you prefer to use a spatula or can you use a whisk to fold it or can you use a wooden spoon? Uh, like, I would buy a spatula. A spatula, well, I will, because to me, silicone is, uh, it's very, <laughs> I use it for many things, but not a whisk, because it, it's, uh, it's not the, the right movement. A wooden spoon, it's perfect. So, yes, a spatula or a wooden spoon. And now we get finally to assembling the cake. Now, I want to, to tell, to repeat again, that these two sponge cake, you can prepare the day before. The cream, you can prepare the day before. So when, when it comes to feta de legon, <laughs> you can actually have nearly everything ready. We have to cut the bigger, um, the bigger sponge cake uh, in three layers. And to do that, it's uh, always nice to use a serrated knife and you place your hand on top of the cake, make an incision all around the, the cake, and then work your way to the center of the cake so that you have a perfect cut. I mean, as much as I, as I can <laughs> have a perfect cut, I'm not a pastry chef. <laughs> You're a great chef, but you can cook anything. So. <laughs> I mean, we can see the picture at the end. Yeah. He's a great we, chef. We had, a, we had an emergency at the restaurant one night that our pastry didn't show up, and we had a wedding cake to make. You know, Dad was able to make the most beautiful wedding cake that night. So. Well, I would like <laughs> Yeah. But uh, I want to say something else about cutting the cake. Actually, it's better when the cake, uh, when the sponge cake is really nice and cold, not frozen, but nice and cold because if it's too warm, uh, it's too crumbly. So it's important that you do it at least like two hours before, okay? The day before, it's perfect. Now, you saw that I cut the first, uh, the first layer, the top layer, I remove it, replace it on a platter. Uh, I cut the second layer. All of the layers are the same right. thickness, yes. And, uh, and now out here, we have to kind of soak basting the, um, the sponge cake with limoncello. <laughs> limoncello is from where my family yes. is from in Naples. So. And since this cake was for Festa delle Donne, yes, but for Marisa and for Francine, we have to use limoncello. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, to prepare the limoncello, I used uh, one part of sugar, one part of water. I bring that to boil. To make a simple syrup. Simple syrup, yes. And I add my liquor. Now, if you don't have limoncello, uh, you could use something like Grand Marnier, an orange liqueur, um, 
even strega, you know strega that is bright yellow, uh, if it's, uh, it's made uh, with uh, a, a lot of different herbs, it's fantastic. Mm. But you can also do without liquor also, right. Right? Yes. yes, if you, if you don't want to use uh, any liquor, um, you can just make the simple syrup the same way, one part of water, one part of uh, uh, sugar, melt it down, adding maybe some uh, lemon zest, uh, lemon juice, but mm. don't, don't not ever, much. no, not too much, uh, not too much acidity. Right. We want to have all the perfume that there is in the, in the lemon zest. Uh, and if you, you have to be careful though with the lemon zest, you want to make sure that you, you don't get the white part because no, yeah, it's very right. bitter. That's, that's very important. Maybe if you have a microplane, use that and uh, really use only the essence of the lemon. It's very important. And okay. And, and what's left over you can drink. Of course. Okay. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> if you like something sweet and lemony. <laughs> um, okay, so the, uh, the the first layer of sponge cake must be nicely, evenly uh, basting, basted with uh, the limoncello liquor. Then we are uh, spreading the cream uh, evenly on the first layer. Usually I would say it's like a quarter on a, of an inch thick. We want a nice cake. Then we repeat the same thing with the second layer and also even with the third layer because the top layers, even on the top layers, I will bust that with the limoncello liquor, nice liquor, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, and I put the cream on top, but beside the cream, now I'm using again the whipped cream, the, the rest that was in the refrigerator because uh, sometimes the, uh, the, the, the actual cream, the pastry cream, especially when it's so dense, it will not help us to uh, get the, all the particles attached to the top and the border. So the whipped cream, first of all, it's an addition. It's a wonderful addition. And it will serve as a glue for, for what we are going to do now. We have to uh, get the smaller cake, sponge cake, remove the top and the bottom, um, and remove the borders or the or the round, and we are going to do to cut it in slices like this, and then in sticks, and in little dice. We are using all these little dice as. Let me show you. And the little flowers of the mimosa. We don't throw away anything <laughs> because we are collecting all the dice and also the uh, the crumbs. And even the, the 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 trimmings from before, you can dry them and use them as a, as cookie crumbs. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, let's we'll go back. We had a question. Yeah. Can you use lemon oil? I don't know, for or, density, or like density. orange orange blossom water yes. or so, so then you can lemon bloss like in lemon yeah. water like orange blossom water uh, and orange essence blossom. of yes uh, I think it's like it's, essence of lemon yes. and lemon think, extract. Yeah. But uh, lemon Very oil, lemon. at least the one that I used, I actually it's it's greasy. It's, yeah. uh, it's not really but you, you could probably put like a drop. Yeah, of lemon extract. Yeah. Yeah. Lemon extract, yeah. yes, yes, of course, of course. So, yes, we are collecting all the little, our little flowers, let's, the, our <laughs> little mimosa <laughs> flowers, and gently we have to put it all around the cakes, uh, cover it nicely. Maybe sometimes you need to kind of press it, press the border, uh, because we really want to pack it up like uh, like the mimosa, like the real mimosa. And to hang the cake, we just need to sprinkle on top some powdered sugar. So, and, uh, 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 thanks. and um, this is your cake yes. you love. Yeah. Uh, Buona festa delle donne. We did it. Yes, Jamal. So, 
with that, we will segue to a new dam, uh, Francine Kowalski, who is a wine industry professional. Um, Francine was born in New York, like I was, and she actually went to the Culinary Institute of America. She studied to be a chef, but she decided that being a chef was not her calling and that wine was her calling. So she definitely went into the wine business, became very successful in the wine business. She was the assistant VP of marketing for Wildman for 29 years. And now she went on her own with her own company, um, Wine Distilled, and she is excited to be here and tell us about really excited wine. to be here today. <laughs> yeah, I prefer to drink for a living. I like to eat out. So, you know, I kind of have the best of both worlds. Um, we're really lucky to have Lamarca Prosecco to be our sponsor for this event. They were incredibly generous with us and um, want to give them a shout out. Um, and what better way to celebrate Women's Day than with some great Italian bubbles from La Marca. Um, Prosecco, as you may or may not know, is actually a grape. The other name for it is called the Glera grape, but uh, most people just commonly know it as Prosecco. It's perfect with, um, with the cake that we're gonna have tonight. It transforms any occasion, elevating the ordinary elegance of Italy. It's lightly effervescent, has a little bit of sweetness to it. It um, goes great with desserts and it just goes great. So, salute, grazie a la marca. Grazie. Salute. And we should let you wait for a second. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, guys. This is what the uh, the mimosa flower also means that I secretly love you or I secretly admire you. So this cake, if you're making it for anyone, means that you love them very much too. So <laughs> the mimosa flower. And I'm going in. Oh yeah. <laughs> We're gonna take yeah. a quick bite. I've been staring at this for hours. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Cheers, Odeph. <laughs> We want to tell you that you will be able to have one of our Desmi Mosa cakes because we're about to do the red full right now. We are. So we all have to do the bowl. I'm going to go ahead and three sizes. Um, so, go for it. Go for it. If you have any additional questions about the cake, Festa delle Donne, if you want, you can write in and we can answer them right away. And if you don't want access today, you you know you can reach out to Ladam, to me, Odette, or Francine. We will provide our emails to you. Grazie a tutti. Uh, right. All right, so we're going to do our last one, but if no one has any questions. <laughs> so we have just want to get to the prizes. <laughs> Okay, so we will have three raffle prizes, and okay, we'll go with the first one, which will be a bottle of America Prosecco. Bottle of America Prosecco. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, we're racing around. Okay, let's do it. Okay, and the winner is. Marissa, you can you can drink Prosecco with your first course too, and you can drink it throughout the meal. Actually, it, 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 really, there's no limit to drinking. Perfect. So it's actually my friend Elaine Claudia, an Italian American girl. And then we'll do the last will be the mimosa cake, right? Okay. okay. So I thought for all of you who cook out there, this is a cookbook that my father wrote. It was printed by St. Martin's Press. It's called Italian Cuisine. So we're going to do a raffle for this book. Some of you might have this book already, but if not, you'll have another one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Listening to him hit a high Sorry, singer. guys, I have to go to another zoo. I so can't, can't believe that. This was great. There were four things that I witnessed that he did on a daily basis that made him the great person that he was. Number one, he was a great cook. Number two, he was a great cook. Number three, he was a great cook. Number four, he was a great cook. Number five, he was a great cook. Number six, he was a great cook. Number seven, he was a great cook. Number eight, he was a great cook. Number nine, he
Okay, and well, now we're all four. Whoa. For that, yeah. mimosa cake <laughs> that will be delivered to your house. Um, if, <laughs> which really helps <laughs> to go figure a little bit further, okay? And Francine will do the, the honor. And the winner is. Wonderful. Marissa, we can't hear you. Marissa, the, the volume is going back and forth. What did I win? Who was the winner? Yeah, who was the winner? With Patrice Costa. Patrice. Hey. Wait, <laughs> Marissa, are you gonna deliver it to us? I will figure out how to get it to you. Don't worry. You're I just want you. you. You can bring the cake too, but we want you to come visit. <laughs> yeah, they, they, we can't hear. We can't hear anything, yeah. but I'm going to go with you said yes, and it's legally binding. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> so, any, any questions? winners because apparently they couldn't hear um, all of them being announced. So Patrice Costa won the cake. Yes. Elaine Florio won the Lamarca. And Tommy Campbell won the cookbook. Tony made the Italian cuisine cookbook. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so, everybody for attending. We really appreciate it. And like I said, if you do have Thank you. So Marissa, yeah. I, I might have missed, I was probably drinking La Marca when you were talking. <laughs> Why did we do the two cakes when you only used one and you cut it? No. No, it's just one cake. Is it one cake? The small cake. Oh. Is that what you're asking? So the, the recipe, cake, not the recipe. Okay, but yeah. the large cake is the cake, and the small cake is for the decoration. Oh, okay. Oh, got it. Okay. Got but it. they will see the slide. Right. This slide. On, on the YouTube, correct, um, Sharon? This will be on YouTube. The recipe will also be on the website, I believe. Odila? Um. I believe that's true. Ronnie will take care of everything and we can send out, you know, a post. Sorry to interrupt. Ronnie told yeah. me that the recipe was included in the same email with the Zoom link. It was. Yeah, and she said that she would send it out again. And <laughs> it's, it's, you know, I believe all, all presentations are going to go on YouTube, but I'll ask Ronnie to confirm. I, I put it in the chat as well. You guys can see the PDF there. Thanks. Oh, wonderful. Thank no, Marisa and Odette, it's Bailey. Hello from New York. I miss you guys so much. I'm so happy to see you. This has been so much fun. Listen, quick question. Um, the cake itself seems like such a great foundation for many, many other recipes. Odette, yes. Yes. what else can we do? Almost anything. It seems like the cake yeah. is... You can put uh, you can put uh, chocolate mousse in it. You can put uh, jam. You can put uh, um, yeah, apricot jam. Yeah. Will be delicious. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you can also put apricot jam in the center, and then you can put a chocolate glaze over the top, mm -hmm. and it's perfect. Yeah. It's just amazing. It's a. It, it feels like it's going to be a, a a staple in my kitchen now. So thank you so much. I love it. Dad, did you make? Did you used to make this cake at uh, San Domenico for La Festa della Donna? We did sometime. Yes, yes. Only for that. Uh, yes, it was only for that because uh, because we had uh, we had other dessert as well. Right. We had a pastry chef there. <laughs> yeah, we, we many of our pastry chefs came from Italy, handpicked by my father, yeah. Odette and I, so we were very blessed, but it's not a difficult cake. It's actually very simple. It, it, it looks a little complex when you see the three parts, but it actually moves, you know, very nicely and easily. So I, it's not that difficult of a recipe. And the beauty of this cake is that, that it stays there for one or two days, even two days, all made up already. 
it's actually getting better because mm. the COVID mm. will go through. It's uh, the second day, I would say that it's better. <laughs> Yeah, who has cake for two days? Uh, well, uh, the, the trick is not to have Shay. it cut, cut into it while it's in the refrigerator. When it's in the refrigerator, you have to cover it really tight so nobody cuts into it. <laughs> I know from experience. Hopefully. Yeah, so otherwise you won't have it the next day. Well, here we can have this event in person and we can actually do a piece of cake. So yes, oh that would be great. Yeah, 2022 and it'll be in person and we'll definitely have cake. <laughs> to go to Rome for next Women's Day. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Grazie. Ciao ciao. Arrivederci. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. I... Marisa. We miss you, Marissa. Ciao. Grazie. Yeah. Thank you to all of you. Uh, miss you too, yeah. Chef. <laughs> chef, we miss you and didn't recognize you with your hair down. <laughs> either i looked at her i said what is that? What is that you look wonderful all three of you thank you so much grazie tanti grazie mwah, mwah, mwah. Thank you, thank you. hi marisa bye thank you uh -huh. ciao 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 ciao